Qatar has dominated the news agenda this week again. Uh, over the past few days, we've seen Doha's response or initial response to the uh, blockade by Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt, Bahrain and other Arab states. Um, primarily, the response has been to reject the accusations that it supports terrorism and assert their right to pursue their own, their sovereign right to pursue their own foreign policy as they see fit. Um, they've also, Qatar this week, we've seen uh, it really going on the offensive on the PR and communications front. We've seen a lot of reporting from Al Jazeera getting Qatar's message out there. And we've also seen Akbar al bakr the chief executive of Qatar Airways, uh, going public with his views on the impact and how Qatar Airways will continue to expand. Um, uh, and similarly, in the diplomatic sphere, we've seen Qatar go on the front foot in, in Europe, etc., with its diplomats going out to uh, get its message across to other governments. Um, other countries' response, we're seeing a firming up of support from Turkey, from Iran, from Germany, uh, to support the Qatar side of the dispute. Um, the US is giving mixed message with uh, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, saying one thing, President Donald Trump saying another thing. Um, but what we are seeing overall is uh, a suggestion that there is no middle ground that has yet been found and that the dispute could become prolonged. Um, that's on at face value, but if you look into the detail, I think it's important that we have seen no significant retaliation from Qatar you know, with, with regard to gas supplies to the UAE, for example, or to Egypt, uh, and we have not seen any particular aggressive response from, uh, from the countries uh, imposing the sanctions or the blockade on Qatar. Uh, so that implies um, that there might be stuff going on in the background and we are certainly seeing an increase in shuttle diplomacy activity from Kuwait as the Emir of Kuwait, Jabir al-Sabah, travels around the region's capitals to try and bring together uh, different sides. Um, so I think there are definitely hopes for a diplomatic solution. Everybody is clear that the longest, longer this dispute runs on, the worse it is for all parties. So I am optimistic that we will find a diplomatic uh, resolution over the coming months. Um, possibly connected with the Qatar story, we've seen in Egypt this week, the parliament has voted to ratify the deal to hand back two islands to Saudi Arabia, two islands in the Red Sea. And uh, we have also seen Saudi Arabia uh, allocating uh, several hundred million dollars worth of development funds to Egypt for development in the Sinai Desert. Now, these could be connected with the, the uh, alliance that is formed with Egypt as part, and Saudi Arabia as part of the, the Qatar situation. Uh, away from Qatar in business, very important week for oil this week, particularly for the UAE. Oil prices um, are struggling. There's a lot of concern in the markets about global oversupply. But ADNOC, which has put the brakes on oil project spending, has started to come back to the market. And we are seeing particularly ADNOC developing uh, the, uh, an offshore sour gas field in the Hale and Gasha uh, region. And, this is a potential $15 billion offshore development, the biggest ever project in the UAE. Uh, we anticipate a tender quite soon for the front end engineering design. Uh, and we're also seeing ADNOC progressing with some other uh, onshore and offshore development projects. Uh, in the infrastructure side, PPP, it's been a big week for public-private partnerships with Dubai as ever leading the way. We have seen two significant developments in Dubai. Uh, the project, $3.4 billion project to develop a deep sewer tunnel network, uh, 75 kilometers of deep main tunnels and 140 kilometers of uh, associated tunnels. This could be going forward as a PPP, we think. Uh, we have also seen the Union Oasis project, the transport-oriented development, uh, um, reaching contract award stage. Now, this is important because it is a rail project with PPP model where you bring together a real estate development with uh, a mall and the, the railway element, and uh, it's an important step for the region's transport sector. All of this and loads of other stories can be found on mead.com. If you click on the uh, story button at the top right, you will be able to see these items, and you can subscribe to this channel using the tab below. Thank you.